What is up guys, Charlie Pegas here. Welcome to another- Oh, that was so cringy. That video is so cringy. I, I just can't stand the way I introduced that video. It's terrible. I made that video back in June of 2017, I believe. And honestly, I thought I was doing such a great job with the way I was presenting my videos. But now my quality standards have changed. Obviously you get better when you do things so much and I got better. So when I look back on that video, I just cringe so hard. Literally, I just wanna puke every time I see it. And of course, it's one of my videos with almost a million views. Why did it have to be that one? It could have been any other video. Thank you so much, YouTube, I appreciate it. You know what, guys? I don't like the quality of that video, so we're remaking it today. This is version two of how to vectorize anything using Illustrator, let's get it. The funny thing about the last video that I made is so many people didn't understand that Illustrator is a vector program. So anything that we lay down as far as shapes, text or anything like that goes is gonna be a vector image simply because Illustrator is not raster based like Photoshop, it's vector based. Any image that we put into Illustrator and we trace over or do anything to, we're gonna make a vector out of that image. So, so many people didn't understand that and they were calling me dumb but I think it's just so funny because they're the ones that don't understand it. And yes, these are real images that we're gonna be turning into vector graphics today, and we're gonna do that two different ways, and no way is right or wrong, honestly. So rest assured that we're working with vector today, okay, <laughs> in case you have any doubts. Um, so uh, the first image here on the left, we're gonna actually create a realistic vector out of it. So it's gonna have all of its colors and stuff like that. The one on the right is gonna be a lot more minimal, and it's gonna be more line work. I found these axes on unsplash.com. You guys can go on there and type an ax, and you'll see them right away. It's like the first couple images so they're not very hard to find but um, basically what I want to do for this first one is I want to hit P on my keyboard because I want to go to my pen tool we're gonna to zoom really close into this axe and I'm gonna trace around it with the pen tool and I just want to make this a solid fill and you guys are gonna see what I'm saying in a second and this is gonna be really cool this one's exciting to me so as you can see I'm using these little um, anchor points I guess you can say to round corners and you can like click and drag to do that so we're just basically doing this and I'm gonna continue on with this handle we're gonna follow it around. If I was doing this for a client or something like that, I would definitely spend a lot more time, but this is for the sake of demonstration, so I just wanna show you guys real quick. So again, we're gonna keep doing this until we get a pretty nice selection of the handle. I would definitely spend a little bit more time on it than I am, because um, that's how you're gonna get the best results, obviously. So, um, But we're looking pretty good right now. It's not looking too bad. And then we're gonna round this top, which is super important. I probably could've did that one, um, one anchor point, but it's totally fine. So now we have a selection of it, right? Let me go ahead and uh, raise the opacity on that, that selection. So what we wanna do now is make a mask. So make sure you're selecting the image and the ax at the same time. Go to these two circles on the right hand side, it should say transparency. And what you wanna do is click make mask and look what it's gonna do. It's gonna make a mask around the ax because we're using that shape to cut it out if that makes sense. From here what we can do is we can actually go to object and rasterize this and I wanna rasterize it with transparency. So make sure transparent is selected and click okay. And now it's gonna become just a flat image, right? From here what I wanna do is go to image trace and then you're gonna see some stuff happen. It's gonna look kinda of ugly right now but what we wanna do is we wanna go right up to view where it says tracing results and on the left hand of that you're gonna see image trace panel. From here we wanna click preset and we wanna choose three color, six color, or 16 colors. After it's done with this processing you can see what it looks like, right? And you can do a bunch of different advanced adjustments to it. There's a lot of loading times unfortunately because this is a really hefty graphic that we're vectorizing but it's totally worth it because you get a cool result at the end. Let's go ahead and try lowering the noise as well and see what that does. So basically by lowering the noise, you're uh, adding more detail to the image. This is looking pretty good. Um, there's definitely some more stuff I do to it, but overall it looks good and I'm happy with it. So the next step that I wanna do, the final step, is go all the way down to ignore white. We wanna go ahead and ignore the background, right? Because the background's white right now, so we wanna ignore that so we just have the ax to work with. So let that load real quick and it's gonna get rid of the white background automatically. Once you click ignore white, it's gonna get rid of the background, and then you can go up to this big button that says expand up here. As soon as you click that, you're gonna have just the axe to work with. So as you can see, we have a vector axe now out of a real life image. So that, my friends, is how you turn a real image into a vector. So that's the first way we can do it, which is a pretty popular way, and it looks really, really cool. There's a couple other things that we can do though. So Let's go ahead and make this bigger first so we can see what we just did. As you can see, this looks like a real ax, right? And it's a vector, so we can actually resize this to any size and it's gonna look really good. It's not gonna lose quality like you would with Photoshop. See, with Photoshop, it's raster, right? So if you take a small image and you try to blow it up, you're gonna get a really pixelated image. 
With Illustrator, that's not the case because it's a vector. So that's the first way to do it, and we're really preserving all the colors in the ax, um, but there's another way to do it. So let's go ahead and go to this other image right here, and this is ax number two, and we're gonna take the pen tool once more, and we're just gonna start selecting around the ax like we did the previous image. So we're doing the same exact step pretty much, right? Um, as you can see, you can really do a lot with this, and you can get as much detail in this as you want. It depends on how much time you really wanna spend on it. So now we have the outline of the ax and we can really do whatever we want from here. But um, let's say we just wanna take it a little step further. So what I wanna do is actually lock that ax layer. We're gonna create one more layer above that and we're gonna start making some wood pattern. And you can really, like I said, just do so much stuff with this. This is definitely not the best wood pattern I have ever done. I'm just throwing that out there but it's really quick and just really gritty, right? We're just trying to get it done. The cool thing about using the pen tool is that we can thicken lines later on if we don't like how thick they are now. So I can select all the lines, um, maybe just not selecting the wood pattern, and I can raise the stroke, see? And we can make it a thicker stroke. So we use the pen tool in two different ways to create two different style vector graphics. So again, we're taking a real life image and we're vectorizing it, and who's to say you can't do this with any image? So. I rest my case, you can vector any image using Illustrator. We have a nice ax graphic, and yes, it is vector. It's vector, guys. As a quick added bonus, I'm gonna show you guys how to save this as a PNG. So let's say you wanna save these axes or this entire document as a PNG. All you wanna do is go up to File, Export, and you wanna Export As, and then from here, you can actually select PNG. That is how it's done, guys. That's how you vectorize anything using Illustrator. And don't tell me that wasn't vectorizing anything. You can go take any image offline right now and bring it into Illustrator and create a vector image out of it, okay? So I don't wanna hear anybody telling me otherwise because yes, Illustrator is a vector program. So anything that we create in Illustrator is going to be vector. If you say otherwise, you just don't know what you're talking about. I'm just gonna throw that out there. So I am so glad I got that off my chest. It feels so good. But anyway, guys, I had so much fun making this video. I hope you learned something new today. And if you did, let me know in the comments section below. I would be willing to bet a lot of you are gonna take photos of your cat or dog and make a vector image out of it in Illustrator now because you watch this video. Let me know if I'm right about that. I just have a feeling that's gonna happen. The reality is this, guys. I filmed that How to Vectorize Anything version one video back in 2017 when I didn't know anything about presentation or videography or anything, right? The only thing I really knew was design. So. That video sucked, it really did. It was terrible and it could have been so much better, but that is how we grow. We learn from our mistakes. But if you fast forward to 2019 right now, look how far I've come because I didn't give up. So just don't give up guys, take it from me. If you're struggling to get better at something, keep struggling, keep working your butt off, you will overcome any obstacle. You have to learn to overcome adversity, guys. So I just wanna let you guys know that you're not alone. We all have to start somewhere and you can't let negativity get to you. That's the bottom line. But guys, thank you so much for watching. You guys already know I make videos like this one every single week. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss another video. Keep creating, keep being awesome. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Starbucks and alpaca, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, what are we gonna name this alpaca? Let me see. So a lot of you came up with names. I think the name that I wanna go with is Gus because my last name is Pangus and uh, somebody by the name of Chris K, you're the homie Chris, thank you so much for always commenting on my videos. Uh, Chris said I should name him Gus and I think that is a fantastic name. So the alpaca's name is now Gus, okay? Gus, meet my subscribers, subscribers meet Gus. This is the alpaca that is hiding in all my videos. I hope you guys are enjoying it. He's taking a break this video, but uh, he might hide in the next video. Who knows? Guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.